Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even uh, good night. In those online conferences, you never know what show, time zone you folks are turning in. Today, I'm going to talk to you about MySQL 8 and MariaDB 10.6 and provide a comparison between those two wonderful databases. Now, this is going to be mostly high-level uh, comparison. And also, as a bonus, I am going to uh, uh, provide a little bit insight in the MariaDB 10.7, which just recently became available as a first preview release. Now, I think what is important uh, to note was uh, that MariaDB is not MySQL, at least not anymore. MariaDB started as a fork of MySQL, but that was quite a few years ago right now. And through that, MySQL and MariaDB have pursued uh, the di different uh, paths and focused on the different things, as uh, I would show. And I think they are both very different, but both wonderful databases. Both of those have a very uh, loyal community and uh, customer base and uh, doing uh, quite great. Now, in this case, I also am going to frankly poke holes at uh, both of those uh, technologies. From my personal opinions, I think they are both doing some things which are great and some things which in my opinion, could be uh, done better. And if I'm successful, wherever you are MySQL lover or MariaDB enthusiast, probably there will be certain things you disagree with. And that is mm, intention. With that, let me get started. So if you think about the development model, right? how are those databases are different? MySQL is owned and developed uh, by Oracle Corporation at this point. MySQL team, though, has a fair amount of independence uh, inside Oracle. With that, the contributions are accepted, but I don't think they are as easy or sought after as in some other open source uh, uh, technologies. And this is also uh, the open source, but more like a dropship open source. When there is a time for a new release, you will have the source code and uh, their uh, binaries are made available at uh, approximately the same time, but you cannot really see in the real time how their uh, sausage is made. And Oracle rationalizes that with what their big uh, uh, public company, there's a lot of uh, policies they have to deal with uh, security bugs or uh, critical crashing bugs and so on and so forth in a certain way, which, well, frankly, uh, is not quite uh, maybe compatible with the open source uh, approaches. MariaDB server is uh, released uh, and maintained by MariaDB Foundation. At the same time, development and roadmap is mostly driven by uh, MariaDB Corporation. There are also other major contributors in, uh, in MariaDB, but it's worth to note what MariaDB Foundation does not employ very large team of developers to drive independent uh, uh, roadmap. Contributions of that are very much encouraged, and that is what MariaDB is very much focused MariaDB Foundation is very much focused on supporting those contributions and kind of chaperoning them into MariaDB. And development is done much more in public with a lot of uh, uh, discussions going uh, publicly, right? Uh, where you can attend a number of uh, developers meeting uh, uh, with MariaDB. Well, at least you could until the <laughs> pandemic uh, hit, but there is, I think, important uh, difference in this case. So I was uh, mentioning uh, the MariaDB Foundation uh, yet. Uh, and this is uh, something I took from MariaDB uh, Foundation website just recently, which highlights what MariaDB Foundation is and what is, uh, its, uh, uh, its uh, goals are. 
Now, I think for you, it may be important to uh, understand that there are two entities in two kind of big important entities in the MySQL ecosystem, MariaDB Foundation and MariaDB uh, Corporation. And why would you really uh, care? Well, MariaDB Foundation, as you could see from a previous page, is all about serving uh, MariaDB uh, community, and it really develops open source software, server, and some other surrounding utilities around, uh, around MariaDB with all that development done as an open source and in the uh, open. MariaDB Corporation, though, is a venture-funded for-profit business which uh, monetizes MariaDB, right? And they release some of their stuff as open source, but also have a lot of proprietary solutions around MariaDB. Software, as well uh, as uh, SaaS, like database uh, as, a, as a service, right? And I think you need to really understand uh, what event software you're using uh, from come from because that's where you will uh, see the difference in terms of how it's uh, licensed and, uh, and other stuff are. Now, I personally find the relationship details with Maridi Corporation Foundations are uh, somewhat mm, convoluted and complicated sometimes. Like, for example, we'll find MariaDB Foundation responsible for MariaDB server, while you will find what are some other components which are important for you running uh, MariaDB successfully, such as connections or uh, max scale are often uh, owned by MariaDB Corporation, and uh, things as the max scale, for example, are not open source. Docker is also quite complicated, right? If you look at the MariaDB Docker build, they are provided by MariaDB Corporation, but then there are kind of Docker library, sort of like a, uh, uh, right, the general the, uh, Docker uh, library builds are maintained by MariaDB uh, uh, Foundation. MariaDB knowledge base is also something which is interesting, right? Because on one extent, this is, kind of community run uh, uh, projects, right? Where MariaDB community is encouraged to contribute, but at the same time, it's hosted by uh, MariaDB, uh, MariaDB Corporation on the com uh, domain name, which is kind of, uh, I find kind of confusing. Here are another things which I find uh, some kind of strange entanglement, right? If you go, to download MariaDB on MariaDB.org, then your download completes. You will be redirected to the knowledge base at MariaDB.com uh, and even more so uh, uh, compelled to create MariaDB ID and give it permission to MariaDB uh, Corporation Right, to get that information to the uh, MariaDB Corporation, which uh, I would only assume can be used for uh, the marketing, uh, marketing reasons. Now, some of you may say, well, Peter, do you consider that uh, unfair? Well, frankly, I don't. I just consider that is something which you guys uh, should be uh, aware uh, about. With uh, MariaDB Corporation, is uh, uh, the company which carries largest weight in development and promoting MariaDB and supporting MariaDB uh, Foundation. Let's face it, without MariaDB Corporation efforts, MariaDB would not be as successful as it is right now. And in return, uh, MariaDB Foundation efforts benefit MariaDB Corporations more than other parties which uh, can be spawn also sponsors of MariaDB Foundation. That is how things work uh, at uh, this point. Okay, in fact, let's look at what is open source and not in uh, this MariaDB um, ecosystem. In case of uh, MySQL, it follows the simple open core model. 
What that means is very easy community version, which is 100% open source, and then a very easy enterprise version, which is uh, proprietary available to the subscriptions only. What is interesting in this case is what that community and open source is uh, the uh, whole of a platform which needed to run MySQL uh, uh, successfully. Like they include the tooling for high availability, proxy such as MySQL, router, and so on and so forth. There with enterprise, you get commercially licensed plugins and also the uh, tooling like backup uh, and uh, uh, and uh, things like monitoring with MySQL enterprise monitors. With MySQL, and I think uh, Oracle actually have been doing a pretty good job in terms of what they did not ever take any components of MySQL, which were open source, and say, no, 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 that's not going to be proper, right? And that is, I think, that is one of the big fears of what we can see in the modern open source ecosystem. Right, like some of you may follow the Elastic drama, where they have uh, had the whole server, which was licensed as a very liberal open source license. Then, boom! One day they, they switch it to their uh, proprietary license called mm, SSPL. MySQL never did uh, anything like that. With MariaDB server. It is a, a completely open source, and even some components which will be proprietary in MySQL like a systems are open source and uh, uh, MariaDB, though some things are only available for uh, uh, from MariaDB Corporation and not open source. For example, if you would find the MySQL router equivalent right, for traffic management, well, you have to pick a max scale, which is uh, proprietary. Uh, license uh, uh, solution. MariaDB Enterprise Server is also particularly interested uh, interesting uh, thing of uh, uh, open uh, source. Their MariaDB server has to be GPL, obviously because it is largely based on uh, Oracle's MySQL, which is uh, GPL-based software but it's only distributed to the customer. So you cannot go and find the uh, MySQL enterprise server sources, right, downloadable, um, uh, easily, right, unless some of the customers choose to share, which, uh, well, obviously they typically don't. You also find what some of the uh, things which I can find particularly cool in MariaDB commercial ecosystems are commercial only. For example, uh, for expand storage engine, which is previously was known as Clustrix, is a very cool shredded storage engine for scalability, but it's only available to commercial customers of MariaDB Corporation. Now, there's also a difference between the open, how the open source and subscription versions are managed. In the MySQL enterprise, it's still a superset of MySQL community. Nothing what is... Uh, in uh, their uh, in the community version is not available in the enterprise, and release schedule is completely aligned. With the MIS, uh, MariaDB enterprise uh, server is kind of extended subset of what community or like a normal MariaDB server is. There are some servers uh, features which are available in community server are not considered to be enterprise grade yet and not available in the MariaDB enterprise server. And also there, there is a different uh, separate life cycle for releases between the uh, enterprise server and the uh, mm, mm, community. Now the other uh, interesting difference is uh, mm, how the cloud native or Kubernetes mm, ecosystem is uh, approached. And uh, in both cases, uh, I don't think the companies jumped on that ecosystem very, uh, very quickly. Oracle for years had uh, like some very early stage alpha version of operator for Kubernetes, which was kind of, I think, never finished, abandoned. And then uh, just a few months ago, the beta version of new MySQL operator was released, which is still not GA yet. 
And that void was filled uh, by a number of customers, uh, by a number of third-party companies. Like you can find Kubernetes uh, operators for MySQL from uh, Bitpoke or from uh, uh, Percona. MariaDB uh, operator uh, as an open source operator done by MariaDB Corporation was initially announced to give a red hat on operator hub launch, but then it's kind of uh, it disappeared. And then last time I did uh, this uh, presentation, the MariaDB Enterprise Operator was uh, available for MariaDB Corporation, uh, where I was not really find any details about, uh, uh, about that right now. And it seems to me, uh, right, unless I'm uh, uh, missing something in here, is what uh, MariaDB's approach in this, key, in, in this kind of cloud and cloud native is encouraging people to use uh, SkySQL as a database, as a service, rather than uh, trying to roll out the uh, operator on Kubernetes. Having said that, there is a large number of third-party MariaDB and Helm, um, MariaDB Helm and operator projects for Kubernetes exist. In terms of a cloud, MariaDB and MySQL are pretty uh, ubiquitous as a database, as a service, at least in the community edition forms. Wherever you go to, my, to Amazon, Azure, Google, you'll find MySQL and MariaDB offer out there as their community mm, editions. In MySQL, you could also uh, have a, see this heavily modified version as Amazon Aurora, where there is no Aurora for MariaDB yet. Now, both MariaDB Corporation and Oracle, they also offer database as a service for their enterprise version, right, which includes all the enterprise features, not just the uh, community. And also Alibaba Cloud offers enterprise cast, uh, version of MariaDB uh, through um, uh, partnership. Both companies, they have also different approaches to analytics. With MariaDB, uh, uh, the specific solution for analytics is the Comolum Store storage engine. The Comolum Store storage engine is something which uh, was known as uh, InfinityDB, right? And the assets of that company were later acquired by MariaDB Corporation and they kind of significantly uh, rewrote the code and rebranded that as a column store. There is the community edition of column store, which is included in uh, MariaDB 10.5 plus, and there is an enterprise uh, column store, which is part of MariaDB enterprise uh, subscription. In terms of MySQL, there is no special open source analytics focused storage engine. What Oracle, uh, has done is they built uh, the Heatwave uh, technology, which is kind of uh, acceleration for analytics, which is only available in the Oracle uh, in the Oracle Cloud, at least at this point. I think what MariaDB and MySQL are focused on uh, the slightly different uh, uh, different use cases. If you look at the early MariaDB uh, days, I think they initially competed with MySQL on features, but then it's kind of not very good uh, in uh, investment, right? Because Oracle implements a lot of the similar um, things uh, as well. Now, MariaDB have been focusing on the areas where Oracle doesn't want to invest uh, as much. Like, uh, uh, for example, migration from Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, I think uh, things like uh, usability for sysadmin DBA, right, like the small low-hanging fruits have been also very uh, particular and uh, great focus of MariaDB, as well as a cloud integration. And specifically, I think the uh, S3 storage engine is, uh, is very cool uh, innovation in MariaDB, which uh, we don't have uh, Oracle focusing 
uh, on that. MySQL continue focused on their, uh, I would say, traditional MySQL use case. And where they try to go is more of usability for uh, developers. Right? Think about a dog store and a lot of investment in JSON uh, support, MySQL shell, which is kind of uh, the, uh, it has some development uh, functions. And they also did a lot of focus uh, on uh, availability at the Oracle uh, crowd. Now, they are not also focused on uh, advanced Oracle features, right? Now, there is a lot of discussion in this case as well. Uh, what is exactly here? Uh, is it uh, something what the customers they serve are not asking about that? Or is it something what they are forbidden to do by their corporate overlords uh, at uh, Oracle? Well, I am not privy to uh, that discussion, but uh, chances are there is some mixture of those uh, things. From architectural standpoint, they also took a lot uh, different approach. In MySQL, specifically with MySQL uh, 8, did a very big re-architecture of the old code base, right? Those things like uh, in a DVD dictionary, uh, Vulkan optimizer, uh, like uh, really limit a lot of choices, focus just on the DB storage uh, engine and so on and so forth, right? It was a kind of very uh, big changes and sometimes uh, uh, painful, right? I also think what there are uh, some decisions which have been needlessly complex and kind of uh, not as uh, practical, right? Looks like they're sometimes designed by uh, in the uh, ivory uh, the ivory tower, not some uh, very practical, uh, simple decisions which Maridi focuses on. A lot of focus has been done on may, making InnoDB better for many uh, use cases. If you look at MariaDB, they did not follow the same MySQL 8 stuff, right? Uh, but they have been uh, iterating and pushing this kind of older code base further and prioritize choice and flexibility, including supporting for, uh, uh, for multiple storage engines. MariaDB now also have been investing uh, specifically in making InnoDB better, and they have their own philosophy for that, right? And that's kind of very interesting for me as you talk to MySQL uh, and uh, MariaDB in the DB team, right? All of they can say what that is their approach about how they see uh, in the DB should be optimized and improved is, uh, is better. And I think that is great, right? You'll probably see the competition between those approaches. I would say there are some use cases and benchmarks where one or now will win and the team will learn from each other and in the DB will be better off in both products uh, because of that. I also think for the development team in MariaDB, because development is so much more uh, open, they are much uh, closer to, uh, to the customers and have a great insight in the practical, uh, uh, practical operations, which is uh, important. Now let's look at the uh, release frequency. We can see what... Uh, release frequency has been quite different between those databases where MySQL 8 uh, released now what? Three and a half years ago, uh, where we have uh, MariaDB uh, releasing their uh, major releases almost like a, a clockwork uh, uh, once a year. Differences between the MariaDB major releases are not as massive as for example, within MySQL 5, 7, and 8, uh, but uh, they're still uh, uh, significant and the pace of innovation is quite good. So you can see in this case from release philosophy, MariaDB continues that kind of classic my, MySQL policy of relatively frequent major releases and no major changes and minor releases. That means if in the major release, you can, uh, do the minor downgrades keeping data center intact. 
The MySQL 8 is something like your evergreen uh, release, right? Where you can see features introduced in the minor releases to the point what you may not be able to agree uh, to move between them. It's kind of you are only moving forward. And if shit happened, well, guess what? You may need to, uh, to recover from backup. With that, let's look at uh, some, uh, uh, some specifics between those uh, technologies. For a client protocol, MySQL supports obviously classic MySQL protocol. Uh, uh, it's also now supports SRV DNS records, which I think is quite, uh, uh, quite cool to be able to uh, really connect to different service points within a single uh, uh, right for a single uh, record. It also supports the X protocol, which is kind of a newer protocol, supposed to be better, you know, faster, whatever. Uh, I wouldn't say it has a super uh, huge uptick yet, and it's not even supported by many cloud vendors, but it's there. Uh, with MariaDB, you have a classic MySQL protocol and various extensions such as for, pro, uh, for the uh, uh, reporting, uh, progress reporting. In terms of an interface, MySQL supports uh, uh, interface. It has a document store where you can uh, you know, talk to that using X uh, you know, protocol and have like MongoDB-like interface. And it is whole, has also memcached interface. So that is kind of legacy and gradually being depreciated. MariaDB is around uh, SQL. It also have a handler socket support, but that again, I would say it's there, but I haven't seen anybody really using that in uh, many years. MySQL focused a lot on the JSON support. I think both in terms of uh, uh, what developers want, but also it's, it's an uh, attempt uh, to compete with MongoDB, which well was uh, eating a lot of uh, uh, easy to use kind of MySQL market in the uh, last uh, few years. It supports a native uh, JSON data type. Uh, they invest in having like very efficient partial updates and has a lot of cool things like uh, JSON shortcut, JSON table, and so on and so forth. MariaDB takes alternative approach. It stores JSON as text, but it has a very, very efficient uh, JSON parser, so that is not as a big overhead. And what I think is important here is in MariaDB, 10.6 uh, JSON table feature was also added. So MariaDB is really catching up with MySQL uh, when it comes to JSON support mm, very well. In terms of replication, that is very significant. Uh, uh, things are significantly different. MySQL has uh, its own GTID. It has a group replication, which is not supported by MariaDB. Now it has this pretty cool feature of a clone plugin for efficient uh, uh, node provision, right? Which is integrated in the group replication, which is also uh, pretty uh, pretty cool. MariaDB has Galera replication instead of a group replication, and it has its own, not compatible, but I think in many cases better and kind of simpler uh, GTID implementation. If you look at SQL standards and compatibility, uh, that is where a lot of improvements happen over the last uh, few years. And uh, I think MySQL uh, here now doesn't really offer at least kind of a big stuff, which MariaDB doesn't cover. There, MariaDB has uh, a lot of support, not just by standard things, but also something which exists in some of our proprietary databases. Like you can have a SQL mode Oracle, system version tables, you have support for sequences, you have support for packages uh, in, uh, in storage engine. So mm, uh, a lot of focus uh, on that. Now security uh, is uh, also something which uh, those technologies take a lot of different uh, approach. And I would just say what there is a significant difference in security and user account management, right? It's just you know, too much of material for me to uh, get in uh, here. So I would suggest you to check it out 
uh, in dependency. Uh, one thing I want to highlight here is some of the recent changes which came in MySQL 8 over last year or so, right? So these are the things which came out well after its release. One cool thing is a dual passwords, which really simplifies uh, password rotation at scale, right? That means uh, you can uh, have an application which only can connect with a single password, right? And uh, you and you can still rotate it faster, even if it has to done through many, many instances. Reloading TLS context, like updating certificate without needing to restart the server quite too cool. Dynamic privileges, right? Where plugins can define their own privileges, right? For certain things, I think is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, important in the innovation in MySQL 8. And also password policies. You know, password policies in the database, you may find that kind of, you know, bizarre, right? So why would you need that? But that uh, is needed for a lot of corporate users for compliance reasons, you know, such as enforced password complexity, password rotation, and so on and so forth. Optimizer, that is another thing where there are huge differences. And that is something I would not would try to understand that in every kind of detail because, well, uh, optimizer is a very complex beast. I don't think anybody understands optimizer and all of its details. I would just prepare for that to be different than what, especially for complicated queries, how the query is executed on MySQL versus MariaDB uh, can be uh, quite different. I think uh, for uh, a while, MariaDB uh, was uh, kind of uh, not following some of the new innovations uh, there, um, uh, what happened in, uh, in, my, uh, in, the, in the MySQL, right? And I saw the statements like, well, you know, can, you know being compatible with MySQL 5.5 is only what matters. But that changed recently, right? I see that there is a lot of uh, features uh, which appeared first in MySQL have been picked up by MariaDB, right? Like a lot of the new features uh, in performance schema have been included in MariaDB 10, uh, 6, ignored slash invisible indexes also have been added with MariaDB, right? Uh, I think there is a kind of a syntax differences, right? And this is something very I wish uh, there would be kind of less eager place than that. And team would just say, well, you know what? Oracle got there first, let us use their syntax, or hey, MariaDB got there first, let the team at Oracle use their syntax, but sometimes uh, there seems to be uh, picking a different syntax while, you know, frankly, it doesn't matter and just would be so easier for people to go back and forth if that would be the uh, same. Atomic DDLs were added uh, without requiring uh, their whole wholesale data dictionary change, things like skip, skip blocks or including uh, C schema in, uh, in, in the DB. So where I also wanted to end is uh, some of the things I find exciting in uh, MariaDB 10.7. So MariaDB 10.7 right now is in early preview. Right, and it looks to me uh, it, like if we expect sort of a similar once a year release, right? There is still quite a few uh, development uh, uh, which is to be done by MariaDB 10.7, but uh, the team has started to show uh, the progress early on. One exciting thing which is available in MariaDB 10.7 is now UUID data type, right? Which allows you to uh, store UUID efficiently without all the kind of hats that are uh, required to do that in, in MySQL or, or something, which is uh, fantastic. We also have uh, continuing work on the JSON improvements. More functions for JSON support, right? And I am glad to see what MariaDB team uh, recognized, what JSON is important in the modern world. And uh, uh, it is important for a project to have uh, JSON 
kind of on par, not only with MySQL, but with other uh, relational databases technologies like Postgres and uh, SQLite. And we also have see the same JSON uh, being available uh, in things like um, uh, histograms for, uh, uh, for table statistics. So these are kind of just some of the highlights in uh, MariaDB mm, 10.7. I would uh, encourage you to check it out. And another thing what I uh, like about uh, MariaDB 10.7, which I think is a new thing which uh, got started, is uh, there is integration with Jupyter Notebooks and others uh, ways to really be able to check out some of those cool new MariaDB features without having to install it on your own server. I think that is a very uh, smart step by uh, MariaDB team, and I think that will allow to get uh, get more uh, more feedback early and uh, get a product better product faster. Well, with that, so that's uh, all uh, I have to say. Thank you for tuning in and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. So, Peter, congratulations on a great presentation. You claim to be an equal opportunity offender, but I have to say I did not feel offended on behalf of MariaDB Server. I think your presentation was done with a great attitude, highlighting the good and the questionable in both products. Thank you, Kai. That's uh, great, uh, great to hear that. Yes, yeah, so I have an observation and a question on that. So I'm comparing you to Monty, specifically to Monty's presentation on this service. You probably haven't heard it yet, but his talk is on migration. And he manages to give a fairly neutral presentation of why closed source started. It's not full of sarcasm or semi-extremist views like it used to be in his speeches. And I'll say mm -hmm. with you, earlier presentations of yours would often consist of phrases like, I find it strange or peculiar, and other wordings that could have been seen as provocative. Now, I might not be very easy to provoke, but I think your view in your presentation today was quite a neutral, Salomonic one. Why is that? Older and wiser. Oh, yes, yes, uh, older. Well, I cannot claim much of a great hair, great hair yet, yes, but I think, well, uh, you know, I think being in in a business as an entrepreneur now for what, 15 years, right, you uh, learn a thing or two, right? And I think that is a, a diplomatic, uh, the diplomacy is uh, one of them. And I also think there is a um, name a place for uh, different things, right? There are one things you can be, you know, having a um, discussion over beers, right? And there are certain things you would say in that audience and the other uh, would be doing that on a kind of a more uh, more global uh, conference, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you will. Yeah, so, so content-wise, you talk about two different wonderful databases, and you describe the differences in a way, I think it's, it's very educational for the user base. So there's not much point in me or you reiterating that you did a great job. Instead, I will ask you about the user base. So how, how aware is the user base about those differences? You talk about the loyal community and the loyal customer base. Does that loyalty go too far uh, where users don't open their eyes for the other database? Yeah, well, I think that is a, uh, that is a challenge uh, overall, uh, right? Uh, uh, in this case. And I think uh, if you look at um, the technology landscape, especially as it goes to compare to open source uh, databases, uh, then we were uh, starting with MySQL, right? What is like uh, late 90s, early 2000s, right? Uh, I think the IT and especially the open source community was much, uh, much smaller. And a lot of people who would engage with that were, were really people with a lot of attitude, aptitude, passion, right? That's the open source was life more than a job, right? right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look in this case, the open source has become so ubiquitous and so successful, then it also becomes like a career for many and people, uh, you know, are with a low of average, right? That means your average open source, the average person using open source software right now is probably not going to be as um, passionate 
tried a skill understanding uh, uh, as you know two decades uh, decades before, right? And uh, uh, many people just you know start to use what uh, they learn somewhere, what they heard, right? Not really uh, appreciate the differences. Now, I would say in certain cases it did benefit actually MariaDB, right? In some case, because uh, there are a number of, of Linux distributions where users would get MariaDB and not MySQL, then install MySQL, and they would just be quite, you know, happy with that. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, the other users, right? They may just heard MySQL and you know pick the MySQL book uh, uh, from that, uh, uh, you know, for, from a shelf, and. Read about that, not recognizing what MariaDB may be a better choice for them, right? Mm-hmm. So that is a challenge, right? And I think that is something where we all can uh, do better, um, uh, continuing to uh, educate uh, mm-hmm. the community. So, which is what you did in your presentation. Um, I, I could make it easy for myself and highlight only stuff where you pick on MySQL or Oracle, and I won't resist that temptation completely. So. Uh, migrations, you talk about Oracle perhaps having uh, overlords that prevent MySQL from developing something like the Oracle compatibility layer in MariaDB. I would suspect the same. Why would they uh, allow such a thing, right? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, uh, you're right uh, in, uh, uh, in this regard, right? That is a very, uh, uh, the inter- uh, that's very likely uh, possibility, uh, right? What that uh, uh, exists, but I think in uh, uh, this case, I also, as you say, maybe with kind of non-existing gray hairs, right, and uh, wisdom which comes with this, I'm managing my expectation. And what I like to talk about the team about about Oracle is what you should not expect Tiger to become vegetarian. Mm-hmm. That is not going to happen. The, the best thing you can expect from a Tiger is to to uh, uh, not to snack on your sheep, right? If you have a, a farmer, right, or, or or whatever, right. Uh, and my point in this case, if you think about the Oracle and MySQL, I uh, think when Oracle acquired MySQL, our expectations of what they may do with MySQL were much worse. Yes, so what was- actually? Uh, that was so, uh, uh, actually. That was going to be my, my, my next point. So I was saying, instead of picking on them, I will ask about something which Oracle did good. They never closed source an open source pro- uh, product, which you pointed out. So in hindsight, now given the past over 10 years, uh, you were probably surprised by that. I mean, I was. W- were you? I mean, I'm not uh, so much uh, subscri- uh, s- surprised about this, right? Because I think that is also uh, in the interest of Oracle to, mm, uh, to do it this way. I think MariaDB already had dent, uh, made a significant dent in the MySQL uh, community. But if Oracle would go ahead and say, hey, MySQL is going SSPL or proprietary, uh, right? Well, uh, that would be really the step to push a lot of users uh, down to uh, to MariaDB hands, right? And they don't. Uh, I mean, I don't think that really helps uh, uh, helps Oracle in uh, in this regard. Right. So, so you were not so much surprised about that. But have there been areas where either Oracle, MySQL, or MariaDB did take you by surprise, either good or or bad, over the last ten years or so? Well. Um, uh, in this case, I mean, I think there's obviously have been a uh, uh, you know number of uh, n- number of surprises, especially if you look at the uh, longer period of time. I think the whole evolution of MariaDB uh, was interesting, right? If the history of a multi programming ID and kind of SkySQL, then uh, uh, you know merging together. Frankly, I did not quite understand the point of that uh, uh, you know separation. Uh, uh, to, you know, to to begin with that, I think that was kind of uh, a little bit uh, um, a little bit uh, uh, confusing, right? Um, the, I think uh, the, some of the steps about if you look at like what uh, MariaDB Corporation, right, not the foundation, chooses to uh, to pursue, right, as a 
proprietary projects or not, that was, uh, uh, you know, surprise to me in in certain cases. I think what was interesting, and, and that's, I would say, like actually the uh, successful uh, for Marie Dewey Corporation to pick up those sort of semi abandoned uh, technologies in the MySQL space, namely kind of plastics and uh, InfiniDB and bring them back uh, together mm-hmm. as a useful product, right? And give them a, uh, a new life, right? I think that uh, was a quite interesting thing, which that doesn't happen that often. Mm. So, okay, yeah, I would mention that. So, um... You talk about MySQL doing a bit of strange uh, refactoring and ivory tower development a bit far away from the customer base. Um, so does MariaDB do similar quote unquote stupid things? I'm talking technical things here. I know you highlighted licensing choices by MariaDB mm-hmm. Corporation where you would have preferred more open solutions. I get that, but this is MariaDB Foundation. So I'm interested in, in technical choices that you find, shall we say, questionable. Well, I would say, I think in uh, in MariaDB from a technical standpoint, right? I think there is a little bit of uh, that um, not invented here, uh, the syndrome, right? And in certain cases, right, I would uh, would like to see more from uh, MariaDB to uh, to look uh, uh, into that and uh, uh, if let's say what. Oracle is doing first, uh, to, right? If that syntax is acceptable, right? For example, maybe adopt that to make it easy for a user, not just making, you know, distinction for sake of distinction, which I think uh, had, you know, happened in a couple of cases, right? Like, yes. yeah, explain you, you, for connection, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, you were saying that we had some ego development there and, and, and you were asking for less of an ego, technical ego from, from both parties. So I think we will need to catch up offline on, on, on what those... Yeah, yeah but, but I think in this case, like, uh, uh, to be uh, honest, uh, the, in this case, I think uh, uh, Oracle does a lot of that, uh, more of that. And I think the, from Oracle side, there may be more non-technical, but even like a legal reasons what they kind of often invent saying, well, you know what, you want to make things slightly different to make sure we are not said as what we are copying the interface, right? Which makes sense because of those kind of super supreme court battle or Oracle had until recently, right? They probably did not want to be said, well, you know what, you're okay copying your competition interfaces too, no. <laughs> right? Uh, well, um, so, mm, uh, so that is. Now, I think I would say I like her seeing some of the changes, uh, right, which are for, uh, for good, right? I remember on uh, one of the MariaDB developers in my meeting, Monty was saying, what, well, what the hell is Docker? I mean, Docker is no different from a Targ zip, right? It just gives you exactly the same stuff, so why bother? But I'm glad what MariaDB Foundation now took over maintaining official Docker builds, embracing, well, actually, people... Uh, run Docker's, right? And you know what? Monty doesn't have to use it if he doesn't want to, but the community uh, mm, the community needs that, uh, right? And uh, I I think, as I mentioned my presentation, I think what another platform I would like MariaDB Foundation to give some love to is, uh, uh, is a Kubernetes, right? Yes. Because that's uh, kind of the next frontier where a lot of users are starting to look at. Yeah, I, I noted that and I was... Uh, for a long while, when I was looking at your presentation, I was going to say, why aren't you mentioning uh, Jupiter, our Jupiter kernel? But then you ended up mentioning it and, and also highlighting that, that, that you can use the Jupiter kernel uh, with a binder interface to test features from, uh, without having to install. So I think that, that's one of the developments originating from the foundation itself lately. Yes, yeah, and I think uh, that is uh, actually very cool, right? I would say I very much like how in the MariaDB 10.7 uh, preview presentation, you make it very easy for people to, you know, just drive new features out without downloading, installing uh, uh, the stuff. I think that is a very cool, and that recognizes sort of like uh, impatience of a modern developer uh, very well. Thank you. So um, MariaDB Foundation is, a, we have three key words for us, openness, 
adoption and continuity. Now, looking at adoption specifically, how do you think, I'm asking for advice from you here, how can we increase adoption? We were talking about here that the, the loyal user bases of product A don't necessarily know about product B. So what should we do to increase this awareness? Or are there other measures that you uh, recommend uh, re related to adoption? Yes, well, uh, what I think uh, in this case, it's um, uh, interesting, right? If you look at development, right, then you look at uh, late 90s, early 2000s, a lot of that was much more database centric, right? Right now, a lot of developers, they came in, they need to uh, get a job done, and they do not really uh, understand what is uh, down the stream uh, very, very well. Like, for example, if you think about uh, MongoDB, which took a lot of market of those kind of like an easy to use developer, right? Their uh, focus, of course, was uh, on the simplicity and uh, integrating with, uh, with drivers, right? And really in the frameworks, right? And really talking to developers in that, uh, in that space. I think for MariaDB to be uh, successful, that may be one of the paths. That's how you can provide to people more of a, uh, uh, differentiating uh, reasons to use MariaDB when you are just starting development, right? Because a lot of the benefits what you can talk about MariaDB, they may be kind of operational in nature or, uh, you know, related to some complicated queries and so on and so forth, right? But they are not kind of different on day one for developer who knows nothing. Where MySQL relational versus MongoDB non-relational, for example, is. So that is one thing I would uh, point out, right? And I uh, love uh, the, uh, the work MariaDB is doing with migration, right? Let's say from Oracle, migration from Oracle, right? And that makes sense for large enterprises, right? That's probably is very helpful for a MariaDB corporation to drive some multi-million dollar deals, right? I would imagine. But that is not what somebody who is a developer who is starting with his first building his first application is going to be really think about or need. Sure, sure. So uh, given our focus on adoption, what you just mentioned about MongoDB and Oracle, so uh, do we at MariaDB focus too much on comparing ourselves to MySQL? So, I mean, that was the task of your presentation and that was a great one, but should we in general, do you think compare ourselves more to Postgres or Mongo or Oracle or, or, or closed source databases like Oracle and, and Microsoft SQL Server? Well, uh, 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 probably yes, but I would even go further than that, right? I think that the, um, uh, MariaDB spent, oh, what is now, is uh, probably uh, a decade or so, right? More than that, kind of comparing itself as a better, uh, better MySQL alternative, right? But I think uh, is uh, uh, the world kind of since that changed and moved on, right? I think in this case, you don't want to think about your competition. You want to be thinking about your user needs. And I think is a better position is not like, oh, they're better than Oracle in this, they're better than Postgres in that, uh, but really uh, help developers to show how they can solve their existing needs with, uh, with uh, MariaDB because in many cases, they will choose that path, which is simple and clear, and not even do that kind of evaluation, right, of what alternatives exist and so on and so forth. Right, that is something which I would be, uh, be thinking about. Right? And I think that you mentioned uh, your work with um, Jupyter Kernel, right? I think that is a very, uh, like, well, good example uh, in this case. Okay, well, great. Those, I think, were good pieces of advice for us and good uh, concluding words for you for our Q&A. So thank you very much, Peter. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kai.